one of you. Amen. 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 This is uh, uh, it's uh, it's my first time actually to travel with my wife and my kids. This is what I say, my wife and my kids, because uh, I always travel. Oh, I used to travel myself and my wife. Then until we start having kids, now my first time really to travel with my kids. You know, when you travel 70, 80 times a year, and sometimes 90 times a year, you understand that uh, you can't take the kids everywhere. So I want to thank God for my wife who's here. Come on, let's thank God for all. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for accepting me with my imperfection. Thank you for loving me with my weaknesses and my struggle. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Listen, I have uh, five DVDs back there. I don't want to go back with those DVDs. So what you mean that I have only one intention is to sell them. That's the agenda. Uh, the intention is to sell them. You know, every year I go, uh, I, uh, there are some countries that are traveled by the God grace for several times, many times. Like one of them is in the Congo. For the past six years, I've been going back in the Congo. And I go sometimes six or seven times to this particular church called Philadelphia. Because that will bring me like a six or seven times a year to preach for his church. And uh, so in my, one of my trips, I told him, I said, listen, I need uh, your media to pick up at least uh, six of the best DVD new things that uh, I did at least a little good job. So we will pick those six DVDs, those there, those will be the DVDs I'm going to sell any time when I go to the international church. So I have the first DVD called uh, The Power of Destiny, uh, which uh, I talk about the different kind of destiny. Uh, the second one, the, the different kind of destiny, I talk about the destiny killer, destiny booster, destiny destroyer, destiny connector, different kind of the people you meet in the step of your life to push you to your destiny. And the people also you need to avoid in the road of your destiny. You know, you can hear from God the way you want to. You can prophesy here a word of knowledge the way you want to. There are two things that you need to be careful. You need to be trained so you can be equipped. This is the stuff we need here. And you have to make sure that you work according to God's destiny for your life. Because if you impair the voice of God, or if you win, you hinder your own destiny, you will stop your own progress. Okay? Alright. So, that uh, is uh, the destiny here. There is another one about uh, the ten elements or the ten ingredients for wisdom. You are required to have wisdom. I listed the ten elements how to be wise. You know, when you still um, when you still uh, in your thirties, like I asked today, Patrick and I, we still are thirties. So when you still in your thirties, you you struggle with some stuff. But I'm grateful in life that uh, I. 95% of the people around my life, except Patrick, except uh, Matthew, that's uh, Albert, maybe three, but 95% of all the guys who are my, around my life are the guys that uh, they had succeed, they did things maybe 10 times, 100 times better than me. But God blessed them, and I'm grateful to that because that will protect you, allows you to walk wise, okay? Young men, we Young men, the text says that uh, I write to you, young men, because you are strong, okay? Because you win the battle. But you remember what he said, I write to you, all fathers, because you know the one who was in the beginning. The one who was in the beginning is wisdom, and the one who was in the beginning is God himself. But young men, they identify them by strength. We do action, we do activity, we do all these things, but we lack one bit, wisdom. That's why we need wisdom. So I listed the ten elements of wisdom in your life. The third one is about the God of now. If you want to know how God intervened in now, I don't want to spend time on that. This one I preach in our church in Atlanta called You Shall Recover All When You Lost the Things. How can God bring those things back in your life? And then the last one I spoke about uh, the direction of God. You know, in the, in the work of God, they are what they call signs. Just like in a highway, you notice what they call stops. You notice what they call the yield. You notice what they call exit. You notice what they call that uh, interest. You notice also what they call U-turn. Those people driving in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, you understand what there is a proper signage. I'm not talking about African signage. I'm talking about proper signage. 
you notice that uh, when there is an exit, they say you can exit it. When there is a yield, they tell you slow down. Now you prepare yourself to stop. The same things with our lives. We mix all those things in our life. We meet part where you need to exit. There are parts where you need to yield. There are parts where you need to slow down. There are things where you make a mistake. You have to make a U-turn to go back again. So that's, uh, this is the last DVD is uh, walking in the God direction. Go to the table, go try and get those DVDs so I'll be, I'll be able to pay my people. Amen. That's the only objective, to pay the people. Amen. 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 Everything rises and falls by leadership. That's what we took time to dissect. We spoke about living without borders. Today, I want to talk to you. Uh, last night, I told them about the last segment. Maybe this morning, I was really rustling in my mind. Then something came in my, in my, in my, in my thoughts. And uh, I believe that's what God wants me to share with you. Today, I want to talk to you about a segment. It's very, very important. It's called Living Without Borders Require Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So I want to talk to you about uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Simple. The, you don't have to get lost. You don't have to confuse yourself. I just want to talk to you about uh, living without borders requires the Holy Spirit. If you want to lead, if you want to go the place that God sent you, you need uh, the Holy Spirit. The first day, we took time to identify, to explain to the people who are here, what is the meaning of living without borders. Living without borders just means that uh, living without frontier. There is no frontier. In the French, you say frontier. There is no any frontier. So you remove all of them. God intended for our lives to be able to live without any borders. In other words, God is calling us uh, beyond the presence where you are, beyond the place where you are today. Then, when we read the text, uh, we also understood that uh, in the last time, I'm giving you a quick recap, and then I'll go to my test of today. We also understood that uh, living, God has called us uh, not only to lead our own people. Remember, Jesus' mission on Matthew 28 was what? Go ye around the world and do what? Preach the gospel. What? To all the nations. He, he expressed that. He said, go to the all the nations. So in other words, in the mind of God, he did not want you simply to stay in Dallas, Texas. He did not want you to stay in Paris. He did not want you to stay in Abidjan. He did not want you to stay in the Congo. He wants you to go the place where there is no borders. Go without any borders. Go without any kind of limitation. Whatever way God wants to send you, you have to incline your heart and say, Yes, Lord, send me. I'm willing to go. So we spoke about uh, living with our borders is a global concept, which means that uh, God expects us uh, to go around the world. He expects us uh, to go reach different countries. He expects us uh, to go touch different nationalities. I took the time to explain to the people, when Jesus uh, spoke to us, he told us that uh, hey, this gospel shall be preached to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every culture we hear the gospel. It was impossible for the disciples to believe in that. They did not know what he was trying to say. But today, we all understood what Jesus was saying. Because with the participation of technology, the gospel is going everywhere. Just with your Facebook page, if you can post something, you say, you know, in your Facebook page, you have a friend from India, you have a friend from uh, Jakarta, you have a friend from uh, China, you have a friend from Africa, you have a friend from different places. All those guys, if you just go to your Facebook, you just write that uh, Jesus Christ is the Lord. You need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Soon as uh, that person will read that, the gospel has come on his door. Ho oh, oh. ho. You see, technology has flattened in the world. In other words, the technology has made the world to become so small. At the same time, the same technology can destroy us. I always talk to the young minister, young pastor, I'm still young myself, but I tell all the young leaders, all the young pastors, all the youngest they come here, watch out to the test that you're sending people. Watch out to the picture you're sending people because some of the stuff you send today in iCloud will never be erased again. Amen. Those stuff will not going to bite you in the present, but those stuff will bite your future. Amen. Yes, stay with me. Those are part of the global concept. They will not going to destroy you in your present, but they will destroy you where you're going. Why? Because as soon as you want, you become a big pastor. Right now, you don't have another writing. People, they don't know who you are. You got your own church 
here in Dallas, Texas, uh, you know, you and the Georgia, they don't know who you are, all these things. Soon as you just become big, that's where the media goes after you. That's where people that go dig what's going on with you. They want to go dig the things. Ask a politician in this country. Ask a Hillary Clinton. They're going over the emails that she wrote 10 years, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. Why? Because living with our morals requires that we understand the concept of globality. We be care, we watch in our personal life, and we are cautious to our action. Cautious to our decision, cautious to our mind, cautious to our mentality, cautious to our movement. Because the reality is this, the choice you make today, we break you or we make you. The choice you're making today, the decision you're making today, we break you or we make you. I already said, there are people who have already destroyed their own destiny with their choices of today. So this is global concept is very important. But today I don't want to waste much time. I want to go deal with this uh, dynamic of uh, the Holy Spirit in our life. I want to deal with the dynamic of the Holy Spirit first, Stephanie, because today is a Pentecost. Because it's a Pentecost and we are Pentecostal. If you are not Pentecostal, I am a Pentecost. I'm not a charismatic. I'm a Pentecostal. Because there's a huge difference between that, and that is not uh, my place to teach all that. I'm a Pentecostal. I believe that uh, you are not just filled with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit cleanses you too. Oh, That's the difference of the Pentecostal and Charismatic. Charismatic, we believe we have to see charisma, gift. But in Pentecostal, we believe that above the charisma, we need to live holy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So stay with me on that. Yeah. I just began. So we will read the text in the book of. I uh, have uh, a text. I, I don't. I don't. I don't teach, teach, give a lot of scripture. So I just have two scripture for you. Genesis, uh, Genesis one, verse number two. Genesis chapter one, verse number two. Okay. Now. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Can you read that with me, please? Can you read that? Read that loud with me. Can you read? Let's go. So the text proved to us 
that the Holy Spirit was already in the beginning with God. As much this text is so elementary, because all of you know this, but you stick with me for 30 minutes, then you will understand where I'm going. So it was uh, the Holy Spirit was there already in the beginning. It's unfair to me to teach about the Holy Spirit without really telling you what is the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Many scholars or many PhD writers believe that uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, according to the book of Genesis, the Holy Spirit was there, was already in the beginning. It was there with God, as we say, it was there in the beginning, it was there with God. Which means that uh, the test used uh, the masculine word to identify the Holy Spirit. Stay with me, I don't want to go. Then, the New Testament, when Jesus Christ came, he used the Holy Spirit as a proclaimer. He said that when the Holy Spirit will come among us, he will lead us. Lead us. First of all, the Holy Spirit when he will come. He will lead us in the truth. Paracleo is a Greek term which is, is a neutral. It doesn't have any gender. It doesn't, it's not a female word. It's not neither a masculine word. It's just a neutral. 